All right, NapervilleTutor at gmail.com. Did you get that? Yeah. It should be going through in a second. All right, let's see if it's here yet. Still don't have it. Uh, so you my name right? Yes, okay. It wasn't going through my phone, so I tried my computer. Got it. We're good. Okay. All right, you see it okay? Yeah. All right. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go for it. We're recording, so you can go back and watch it again later if you need to. Okay. Find the derivative of that and calculate that for that, 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 that. All right. So we're doing the definition of derivative, right? Yes. Okay. And what did what did you learn? There's a couple ways you can do it. Do you have the limit as a goes to zero? Or h goes to zero? Yeah. H. Limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so f of x plus f of x plus h, here's your f of x. So f of x plus h is gonna be four over two times x plus h. By the way, I don't know why, I don't know why they write it like that because the two and the four will cancel and it's just gonna be two over x. Mm -hmm. Do you, you see what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to simplify that to make it simpler. So that's 2 over that minus f of x, which is just 2 over x, all over h. And this, of course, is the limit as h goes to 0. So to simplify this, what we're going to do is multiply the top and the bottom by x and x plus h. Do you remember? Do you understand what I'm doing here? Yes. Okay, this is called clearing a fraction. So I'm multiplying the top and bottom by that. So that's going to go here and here. And this is just going to multiply here. And when I do that, I'm going to get the limit as h goes to zero of the x plus h cancels and you just get 2x for that first term. Got it? When I multiply this by this, the x plus h cancels and I just get 2 and x. Mm -hmm. When I multiply it here, what cancels? The x. Good. And I just get minus 2 times what? Um, h. Wait. x plus h. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Understand? Mm -hmm. And then here I have h times x times x plus h on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's distribute this up here. That's negative 2x minus 2h. So what happens to the x and the 2x? Um, they cancel out. Those cancel. So this just equals the limit as h goes to zero of negative 2h all over h times x times x plus h. And now what can cancel out? The x or the h. The h, good, which is a good thing because after all, now if I want to find the limit as h goes to zero of this, what can I do to find it? Um. Now I can take that zero and do what? You can distribute. I can plug it in. Mm -hmm. See, at the beginning, I couldn't plug the zero in. Can you see why? Yeah, yeah. If I plug zero in, I would have zero over zero. Yeah. That's called indeterminate. But now that I algebraically manipulated this expression and I canceled out those H's, now if I plug in zero here, that just goes away and I get what? 
Um, yeah, negative two over x squared. Good. Negative two over x squared. And that's your answer. So your answer is negative two over x squared. So what is f of negative one? Plug negative one into that. And what do you get? Um, two. Negative two. Mm. Do you see why? Yeah. Because a negative one squared is a positive one. Negative two yep. divided by the positive one is negative two. Mm. Got it? And if I plug this in here, if I plug this in two, and what do I get? Um. Negative um, one. Negative two fourths. One half, okay. Which is what? One half. Negative one half. Yeah. Right? That what you meant? Right. Yeah. So for these points, I have to plug them into f of x. Not f prime of x. So I'm plugging, what's f of negative one? Um, f of now I'm plugging it into the f function, which was two over negative one, which is what? Um, negative two. Negative, yeah, negative two. Good. And for this one, what's f of two? Two over? Two, negative two. Two, two over positive two. So one which is one. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm plugging it into this function up here. Yeah. The f of x function, right? Which is two over x. So this just equals one. So the tangent line, you remember the formula for this? Y minus y1 equals x, I'm sorry, equals m times x minus x1. Mm -hmm. You get that? Mm -hmm. That's your point slope form. Mm -hmm. So my tangent line is gonna be y minus What's y1? Um, negative two. Good. So what's y minus negative two? Um, y plus two. Good. Equals m, what's m? Um, I don't know. This is your m. Okay. That's what this is all about. Your derivative is your slope. At that mm -hmm. point, I'll give you, if we have time, I'll show you a picture to help you visualize that. Okay. So negative two times what? X minus negative or plus one. Perfect. And what's the other tangent line? Um, y minus one equals negative one half and then X minus or yeah x minus two good and if we simplified this this would be y equals negative one half x distributing that in would give you plus one and you're adding another one so plus two right if we if we yeah. wrote in a slope intercept form the reason i'm pointing that out is because watch i'm going to show you now how this what really what this is if i graph um two over x if I take two divided by x and I graph it, mm -hmm. and I and I zoom in. Do you see how that's a? Do you see how that's a? What kind of function that is? Do you see that? Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to zoom in at the at the point two, and also at the point of negative one. I'm going to give give us both of these. Okay, so I'm going to take a picture of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a new little trick I learned how to do on my iPad. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's the function. There's my graph. Okay. Done. Save the photos. All right, I'm going to go to this next page now. Um, no, I kind of want to stay on this page. Let's, let's insert it on this page. Don't you love Oh, no, what the heck? Didn't save it right. That didn't, that didn't work how I wanted it to. I thought I, I, thought I saved it, didn't 
Yeah, I don't know why I did that. That was weird. Mm -hmm. Okay. Done. Save to photos. Image library. Oh, there they are. Now they're both there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now I'm zooming in on this because, whoops, no, whoa. Undo, undo. Okay. I'm going to zoom in on this and make it bigger. Okay. What we're doing here, what the whole idea behind this derivative is, we are taking, watch what we're doing. At this point, what we're doing is we are finding the tangent line of at that point right there. Mm -hmm. Do you see that point? Yeah. That, that point is, I don't know, that wasn't one of them. One of them was this point right here. It was this two. Yeah. What was that point again? That point was two comma one. One. Mm -hmm. Is that what that was? Yeah, that's two comma one. And we want to know the tangent line. This is the tangent line right here. We're trying to find the equation of that tangent line. What does the slope of that line look like? This line right here, what does that slope look like? Is it positive or negative slope? Um, negative. It's a negative slope, so it's going down, right? Mm -hmm. And you see how it's, I didn't do a good job with this because these aren't square exactly, but that slope is negative one half. Mm -hmm. That's what the slope is, it's negative one half. Okay? Yeah. So the, 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 that, that's what the, the derivative, when you find the derivative, it basically gives you the equation. If you plug in that point, it's gonna give you the slope at that point of mm -hmm. the tangent line at that point which tells you kind of how quickly at that point it gives you a snapshot at that point on that graph, how quickly it's increasing or decreasing. It, this is decreasing at a slower pace, but this point right here, the other point's at negative one. So that point right there, look at the tangent line at that point. Is it positive yeah. or negative? Um, negative. It's negative, but do you see how it's steeper? You see how it's a steeper yeah. slope than this one? Yeah. That's because the slope is negative two. And it's, that means it's decreasing faster. In fact, if you go the further you get to the right, what's going to happen to the slope over here? Can you see? Yeah. The yeah. tangent lines are going to be vertical almost, right? So they're going to be really big negative numbers. And it's going to be decreasing really quickly. Do you get that? Yeah. That's the whole point of of finding derivatives. That's the idea behind finding derivatives. It helps you, it helps you visualize any graph taking a snapshot at every single point and telling you how fast it's increasing or decreasing. Mm -hmm. That's that's the idea behind that. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, good. Sorry if you already understood that and I didn't need to explain that, but no, that was helpful. Okay, I'll fly through this. All right, find the derivative. All right, let's just do this quick. You ready? The limit as as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, which equals the limit as h goes to zero of the square root of, I'm plugging in x plus h here, minus three, minus square root of x minus three all over h. Now, this is going to be trickier. This is a different kind of trick I need to do. It's mm -hmm. called multiplying by the conjugate. So I'm going to write these exact same things out, x plus h minus 3 and x minus 3, but I'm going to change the sign in between them. That's called the conjugate, and that's what I'm multiplying the top and bottom by. Okay? And the reason we do that is just trust me, algebraically it's going to all work out. When we do this, what happens? When I multiply this out, I'm going to get the limit as h goes to zero. Just trust me on this. On the bottom, I'm going to get this. x plus h minus 3 plus square root of x minus 3, right? I'm not going to do anything with that. But on the top, I'm going to get this and this multiply together, and the square roots go away. So I'm just going to get x plus h minus 3. 
And these things cancel out with these two, the outside and the inside cancel out with each other because they're conjugates. So this times this is going to give me a negative, whatever's in here. So that's a negative X minus three. And what do you know? When I distribute that negative in, the X's cancel and the threes cancel. And all I'm left with is an H. You see the H there? Yep. And that H is going to cancel with the H on the bottom. And I'm just going to get the limit as H goes to zero of one. One is left on the top. And on the bottom, I just have the square root of X plus H minus three plus X minus three. And now when I plug in zero, what do I get? Um, yeah. When I plug in zero, all I get is two of these. Mm -hmm. You see? Yes. And that's my, that's my derivative. One over two square root of X minus three. Okay. So what's the derivative at four? It's one half. We'll just do this point because I can't see the other one. Yeah. What's the point at four? I plug in four, that's the square root of four minus three, which is one. And so my tangent line is y minus one equals m, which is one half times x minus four, done. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. Did you follow that okay? Yes, I did. Okay. Stop me if I'm going too fast, but I know time is running out and you probably have a lot of questions. You'd rather me just run through these so you can watch them again later, yeah? Yeah. Okay, find the derivative and calculate, find the slope. Did they teach you a trick for this yet or no? Uh, no. Here's the trick, two X minus four, that's the derivative. Okay. It's called, the, it's called the power rule. You take the exponents and you drop them down and multiply by whatever's in front of them and you reduce them by one. So 2x, this was a 1, it multiplies by the 4, you get to 4, and it reduces by 1, x to the 0 is a 0, or sorry, just 1. So it's just 2x minus 4. And then this is just, you don't even write that because there's x to the 0 here, so it's just gone. But if you don't believe me, that's okay. I'll do it real quick. The <laughs> limit as h goes to 0 of uh, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h equals the limit as h goes to zero of, this is gonna be tricky, x plus h squared minus four times x plus h plus three minus, and now we're gonna to have to put this in parentheses, x squared minus four x plus three all over h. So this equals the limit, blah, 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 of x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 4x minus 4h plus 3 minus x squared plus 4x minus 3. Check my work. I think I did it all right. I'll know if I got it right in a second. And like we talked about before, watch what happens. That's gone and that's gone. The 4x and the positive 4x are gone. The 3 and the negative 3 are gone. And all I'm left with on the top are a bunch of things that have H's in them. So it's the limit as H goes to zero of two X H plus H squared minus four H all over H, which means I can factor an H out or just cancel it out of all of them. And that's limit as H goes to zero of two X plus H minus four. And when I plug in zero for H, what do I get? Um, 2X minus four. Look at what I told you we would get. Mm -hmm. Nice little trick to know. You'll never do this again once you learn that trick in calculus, just FYI. So what is, is it two? Is it two that they're asking for? So that would be zero. Two, and the yeah. point would be two would be two squared minus four times two plus three. So that's four minus eight, negative four plus three is negative one. So y plus one equals zero. 
and it doesn't even matter what else I get, right? Because mm -hmm. it's going to be zero. So really, this is just y equals zero, y equals negative one, rather. Okay. That's just a horizontal line, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of cool. And by the way, that's the point of this. One of the main points of this is you want to find out where. So if I looked at this graph right here and I graphed it and I wanted to know where the max or min point was, because this is a parabola, the max or min point is wherever the derivative equals zero. So if you set the derivative equal to zero, that's going to give you Basically, you're saying, where is the slope of the tangent line zero? And th that would mean, where is there a horizontal tangent line? Okay. And that would be where the graph changes directions. So that's what that told you. That's why that was such an important thing. So he, this actually is your vertex. This is your, is a max point or a min point. Mm-hmm. But we happen to know it's our vertex because it's a parabola. There's only one max or min in a parabola. But if it was a cubic or a quartic or a quintic, a fifth degree polynomial, the same thing applies. You can take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and boom, you find out where the two, you find out where the max and min points are. But again, for the sake of time, I'm not going to do that anymore. All right, this is an easier one. Can you tell me what the derivative is going to be without doing the mess? Uh, 2x plus 1. What's the derivative going to be? What I tell you the trick was for a, for a polynomial like this. Uh, take, the, take the exponent, multiply mm -hmm. it down by the coefficient, mm -hmm. and, then reduce the, and then reduce the exponent by 1. So just negative two x minus one. There's no x's left. Oh, okay, okay. Just negative two. So the, the, actually, this is just negative two. It's always going to be negative two, mm -hmm. which means it doesn't matter what point you're talking about. The slope is always going to be negative two, which makes sense because what kind of graph is this? Um. Is this a parabola? A line? A circle, what is it? A line. Yeah, it's a straight line, right? It's a line. So what's the what's the graph? What's the slope at every point of this straight line? What's the slope always gonna be? Um negative. It's always gonna be negative too, because it's a line. Mm -hmm. The slope's always the same on the line. Whereas if it was a curve, the tangent line, right? The slopes are gonna be different. If I, had a, if I had a parabola like this, then the tangent line here is going to have a positive slope. The tangent line here is going to have a positive, but less. The tangent line here is going to be, have a zero slope, and this is going to have a negative slope, and that's going to be a bigger negative slope, et cetera. Uh -huh. Got it? But for this, every point is the same. It's on the line. Every point has the same slope, so it's just negative two. Okay. So I'm not going to go ahead and go through the that's a, that's an easy one to do with the yeah derivative rule so this would be uh just negative two this would also be negative two now the point is going to be different right this point is going to be um what negative four negative five mm -hmm. so the tangent line here is just going to be um it's going to be the same it's going to be the same equation basically it's going to be the same line yeah so I can, I don't even have to do the work. I know it's going to be negative two X minus one, negative two X minus one. It might look different at first, but when you simplify it, it'll simplify to that. Watch, I'll show you. Y plus five equals negative two times X minus two. If I simplify this, I get negative two and I get positive four, but when I subtract five, I get negative one. Mm-hmm. I know that's going to happen because it's this, it's this point with a slope of negative two. Well, there's the point right there. And the slope of negative two is going to be that same line that we started with. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yep. So five, this would be what? Negative 11. 
and that's going to still be just that equation when you simplify it. Okay. Okay. That was a lot. Did I go too fast for you? No, I no that I understood. Awesome. Uh, when's your final? Um, uh, Monday and Tuesday. This next. Okay, so you're in the same class. You're in that class. That's doing that. All right. So, uh, are you coming in on the weekend?